Canadian Bulldog from Wrestling Merchandise and Memories. That's merchandiseandmemories.com. And with Halloween right around the corner, we're looking at eight WCW Halloween Havoc moments that we need to talk about. From 1989 to 2000, WCW presented its annual Halloween Havoc pay-per-view, and over the years, the event provided memorable matches, appearances, and visuals. To be clear, this video isn't necessarily listing the good moments or the bad moments from Halloween Havoc, just the ones we need to talk about. This also doesn't include anything from the NXT Halloween Havoc era that began in 2020. Just before we get started, I wanted to remind you that Wrestling Merchandise and Memories has more than 100 unique and conversation starting top 50 lists on its website. Check it out at bit.ly backslash top 50 lists. Ric Flair's Last Match In 1994, the third in a series of matches between Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair took place at Halloween Havoc. Both men technically had one victory in the series, though Flair's was just a countout win. The rubber match was held in a steel cage, and to make sure the bout was fair to both sides, Hogan's former tag team partner and BFF Mr. T was made the special guest referee. Hulk Hogan won the match, and as per the pre-match stipulation, the Nature Boy was forced to retire. Although, Flair would continue to compete on and off for the next three decades. Is it too late for me to get my money back? Barry Stingham. In 1990, the main event at Halloween Havoc was NWA World Champion Sting versus Four Horsemen member Sid Vicious. The title match had a twist. At one point, the Stinger and Big Sid ran backstage, and once they returned, it appeared as though Sid had pinned Sting to win the title. But wait, it was actually Barry Windham who cut and dyed his hair, painted his face, and purchased the exact same trunks as the Stinger in order to help out his fellow horsemen. The real Sting returned, the result was overturned, and the good guy prevailed. Still, there is a significant height difference between the Widowmaker and the Icon. Wouldn't the referee have noticed? I remember at the time the Mark Magazines ate this shit up with a spoon. The Not-So-Ultimate Challenge Any true wrestling fan has seen or at least heard about the WrestleMania 6 main event between Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Hell, I was there in person. Warrior got the win, and Hogan never received his customary rematch. Eight years later, Hogan, now Hollywood Hogan, wanted revenge on the Ultimate Warrior, now Warrior, and they did battle at Halloween Havoc 1998. Was it as good as their first match? No, not at all. Not even close. Unless your idea of classic includes interference by Horace Hogan and the Hulkster trying to throw a fireball and failing miserably. Flame Broiled Abdullah The opening match at Halloween Havoc 1991 was the Chamber of Horrors. Originally between the teams of Sting, El Gigante, and the Steiner Brothers against Barry Windham, Oz, the Diamond Stud, and One Man Gang. By match time, Vinny Vegas, the Widowmaker, and Akeem had pieced out and were replaced by Cactus Jack, Big Van Vader, and Abdullah the Butcher. The Chamber of Horrors was a war game style cage match full of silly gimmicks, but in the end, it featured Rick Steiner being placed in an electric chair and then swapping spots with Abdullah the Butcher. Cactus Jack threw the switch and, well, electrocuted Abby. Talk about the ultimate loser leaves town match. Rude Phantom. Also at Halloween Havoc 1991 was the debut of the WCW Phantom, who legend has it died in a freak accident at Center Stage Theater and now spends eternity haunting WCW pay-per-views. Not really, but that would have been a pretty cool backstory, no? The mysterious WCW Phantom wore a mask that showed off Rick Rude-like features underneath it, and he used Rick Rude's Rude Awakening as a finisher. I feel like it's Ron Simmons under the hood. Post-match, Paul E. Dangerously and Medusa announced that the mysterious WCW Phantom is really Old Man Jenkins, the custodian of the amusement park. I mean, Rick Rude, whatever. Diamond Cut for Time. The main event for Halloween Havoc 1998 was WCW World Champion Goldberg versus Diamond Dallas Page, arguably the company's two biggest heroes. The belt was a tremendous back and forth contest with DDP handing Goldberg his best in-ring performance to date. Things were going great until they ran out of time because most pay-per-view companies cut the signal exactly as the show was scheduled to end. That means most fans didn't get to see the finish they paid for. Snakebitten. 
Jake the Snake Roberts and Sting were in the main event of Halloween Havoc 1992 and were involved in a crazy vignette where their eyes shot frickin' laser beams at each other. Ah, early 90s WCW, never change. They had a spin the wheel, make the deal gimmick where the wheel would decide on the stipulation for their match. Steel Cage, Texas Death, Judy Bagwell on a pole, Mountain Dew Pitch Black, and so on and so forth. For some reason, they chose a coal miner's glove match, which really meant nothing special. The finish of the match saw Jake's pet cobra bite him in the face, where Roberts literally had to force the reptile to do it. And may I just say, what the hell? Get ready for Yeti. At Halloween Havoc 1995, WCW didn't think that Hulk Hogan defending his world title against newcomer The Giant would sell enough pay-per-view buys, so they upped the ante, just a little. First, the two competitors had a monster truck sumo match on the roof of Detroit's Cobo Hall, which led to the two men fighting and then The Giant falling off the building's roof and, unfortunately, dying. Thankfully, the giant recovered immediately, entered the arena, and immediately changed into his ring gear to face the Hulkster. They had an okay match, considering it was the Big Show's first ever wrestling contest, but then Hogan's manager, Jimmy Hart, turned on him, causing him to lose the title on a disqualification. This led to outside interference by Kevin Sullivan, Randy Savage, Lex Luger, and yes, the Yeti! No, not the popular water bottle, but the unpopular undead mummy who just happened to be in the building. And to ensure that the finish wasn't overbooked, Yeti and the Giant, let's say, hugged Hulk Hogan. I bet they wish the pay-per-view signal ended early on this one instead. Are there other WCW Halloween Havoc moments that we need to talk about? If so, leave your comments in the section below. Be sure to thumbs up and like this video and subscribe to Wrestling Merchandise and Memories for more great content.